What's going on, metalheads? This is Jamie, and uh, thank you all for being here. I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, welcome. Um, please subscribe and uh, turn the bell on for notifications. And to all you subscribers, I I really appreciate your support and for you watching all the videos. All right, so got this in yesterday, the TS three forty one Sidewinder by Tucson, and. Uh, it's uh it's got pretty good action but you know how i do I always take them apart especially these two suns you can always it seems like they can always be made better they don't use the best i don't know if the, what they use but it doesn't it seems like it's more of a grease lubricant or something but every two sun i've taken apart and cleaned and lubed has improved although this one here is pretty darn good pretty good action as you can see i struggle with that fuller to get my middle finger on it but I, I can do it if I get it just right but I think that uh, cleaning it and lubing it will make that a little better so let's jump right in there all right which side do we want to take apart here um, I always do the frame lock side so let's just continue with that trend all right we'll start here with this pocket clip screw this side's spinning. Let's see if I can hold it with my finger and get it to... Is it still spinning? Hold on a second. Let's see here. Just so I can tell if it's actually spinning or not. Yeah, it's spinning. That's what we got this one for. All right, let's see if we can get this to break loose here. There we go. Yeah, she's loose now. All right. Which we'll leave it in. We may not need that pivot tool. Tell you what, one thing I have noticed with Tucson's recess clips, the tolerances are tight. Oh, what do we have here? There we go. Yeah, okay. Let's see what's going on here. So the standoff's just going all, it's actually sticking up out of the scale. Flush with the, or the, the frame here. It's actually sticking up out of the recess, I should say. And it's flush with the frame, which, and with this being recessed, it locks it in. This clip is much, much better than the last one. I had to put a O-ring under. This one actually works pretty darn good, so. All right, let's see if we can get this side off without taking, without the two sun tool. Oh, it broke free. It's not spinning. That's good. All right. All right. Come out of there. There we go. There's some lubricant in there. Mm, a lot of it up here, too in the backspacer for some reason. Odd place to have so much. I think they just dunked these things in oil, honestly. Oh, bolster fell off. Yeah, I think they just dunk them in oil before they put them in the box to make sure they, there's no corrosion or anything because the outsides of them come just covered in oil, which is, excuse me, which is a good thing in my opinion. But it seems like the whatever they're using on the pivots and the bearings just isn't the best. It's thick. It seems thick to me. More like a grease than a like an oil. So we're gonna see if we can make it any better, as always. Alcohol swab here, that's all this is. And it looks like we have washers and bearings. Alright. Clean that up. And get my microfiber out here. Backspacer's coming out. Hmm. That washer doesn't seem to want to come out. That's all right. We'll leave it in there and just clean it. It doesn't need to come out. Get my nail down that groove where the bearings ride. 
clear all that out of there and then also clean up here where the pivot's going to go there we go and we definitely want to clean inside the stop pin track we're going to i'm gonna put some kpl heavy in that uh kind of like we do with the detent hole and detent track there was no oil in this at all in this uh, lock pin track whatsoever so i'm gonna put a little bit in there i don't think it could possibly hurt anything could only help bearings feel nice and free yeah there's some kind of lubricant in here but it's pretty dirty looking whatever it is you know it's turning this alcohol swab black I don't know how well stuff shows up on camera. A lot of times I go back and watch my videos and it's what I see on camera, I, it, or what I see in person, it looks so different in cam on camera. Probably because I'm doing all this on an iPhone. I'm not using some high-end camera or anything here, so this has all been done on my iPhone. All right. Let's uh, dry these off here. This all dried out, wiped off. I'm gonna stick it in the hole. We always like to stick it in the hole. There we go. Make sure we get everything out of there. Do the same thing on here. And here. All right, we are ready to reassemble. Oh, I never cleaned the pivot. It's definitely not titanium. It's magnetic. So it's the hardware, just so you know. The frame is titanium, but the hardware is not. Let's clean this pivot off also. There we go. All right. We got a D-shaped pivot. And we have a D on the lock bars side, as you can see there. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this through this side to try to make it in the right place for that side. Make it easier on the reassembly here. So we'll put that just like that. Bolster stayed in on this side, didn't fall out, but bolster fell out on the other side. I have a feeling that's because it acts as the... Um, over travel stop for the lock bar so I don't know if it's been gets pushed and hits it I mean it fits in there pretty tight actually it's the fitment is really good that clicked in there I don't know if you could hear that I'm having a hard time getting it out now unless I do that but listen to this fitment is really good listen when I click that in hopefully the mic picked it up but yeah really good fitment all right so where's the KPL at all right, I'm going to put some KPL Heavy. No one's ever told me to do this, and I've never heard anyone, seen anyone do this, but I don't think it could hurt to put a little bit in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit in here, too. For that. The stop pins to ride on. Actually, while we get that out, we'll go ahead and throw a little bit of this in here, and we'll be done with this one. I ordered some more KPL and I got a the kit that's got the ultralight, I think it's called, their newer version with it. I thought that had been here by now, but they don't have the fastest shipping. I ordered that crap last Friday and it's it's a week exactly. Well that came out way faster than I wanted it to. Yeah. So it's been over a week. Or it's been exactly a week, a little over a week tonight, so. Alright, so that's good to go. We're done with the heavy. All right, still waiting on my uh, full-size Raylite sheepdog also. Ooh, that came out fast too. Trying to wipe some of that off my finger. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. 
It, it says it will be here tomorrow, according to tracking on USPS, but we shall see. And when I track the KPL, it just says on schedule. There's no tracking updates, no nothing, so hmm, I don't know. Sure, it'll get here eventually. But I'm running low on regular KPL. Really low. I'm getting very low on it, so. All right, let's throw our other bearing on this side. We'll put a drop under there. Probably don't need it, but just a tiny tad. Just a little bit. A little bit. We'll do a drop there and spinner. We like spinners too. We love spinners. Spinners are fun. All right. And our other washer, as you can see, two different sides. We got a, a raceway, I guess, for the bearings to roll on. There we go. I'll go ahead and put a tad on that side. Bolster's falling off again. And all of our standoffs are in there. We're looking good. Got only the two screws in the pocket clip left. All right, we should be good. Is our D going to line up? There's our D. We're lined up in the back. Oh, dumbass. Don't pick that up. I don't know. If it can be screwed up, I'll figure out how to do it. Trust me on that. Trust and believe. If it can be screwed up, I will do it. But you know what? Generally, I'll learn from that screw up and not make that mistake again. Generally, not always. All right. Take two. All right, pivot looks, the D shape looks like it, it's where it needs to be. Stand off in the back is on. All right, I get my finger under that pivot so it won't fall out. So I'm gonna have to take you off camera for a second. All right, got my finger under the pivot. All right, we are not locked in yet though. That D is off a little bit, so let's see if we can spin it around a tad. Which way we need to go? We can do that counterclockwise. This is one of the two sons of newer knives too, the TS341. So, you know, they're apparently still using this proprietary pivot here, which I don't understand why they do this. All right, did we just lock in? Yeah, we just locked in right there. All right, we are, we are in there. All right, let's go ahead and put the bolster on here. That's not how it goes. That's how it goes. Pivot screw, pull out the good screw. Get you a good screw, man. When they drop, get you one of these things. You won't regret it. These things are awesome. I love this thing. Apparently they don't, they make them in limited quantities or something though, because they don't always have them in stock. They sell out pretty much instantaneously, instantly when they release them. All right, let's make sure that is seated down in there good that pocket clip last thing we want is trouble with a tucson pocket clip my god they do so good on everything but these clips there we go it's popped right in there tolerances are really tight on that which is that fantastic there's no room for that clip to move once you seat it down in there it's not moving at all all right now we are going to have to have two drivers to tighten this down i think Let's go ahead and close that up for a second. Let's see if this spins. No, it's not spinning. All right, now we are still really, really loose on our pivot, as you can tell. Look at the centering, how far off that is. We are way off. So, crank this biatch down. Try to get this to where you can see it. No, something else is off here. This is not seated in there all the way. 
that D shape is not where it needs to be. That's what it is. All right. I could have sworn I felt that thing go down in there. All right. Where's my... There. Hear that? It definitely wasn't seated right. Now we should be good. All right. Let's get a little snug. All right, I already pulled over a lot and I haven't even tightened it yet. We're almost centered already. Black on black, it's really hard to see. I don't know if the flashlight will blind you or not, but I'll turn on the low lumens. See if I can hold that there. Yeah, that's even worse on you, isn't it? Yeah. You have to trust me. It's almost centered. And a little turn, and it will be. All right, we are dead nuts. Centered. Go ahead and work some of that KPL magic juice in. All right, and get some of the stuff out of the way here, and we'll check the action out. All right. This is the uh, Ray Light uh, Mini Pineapple, in case you were curious. Fantastic little flashlight. Works off AAA, or you can get the rechargeable 10440, I think it is, for it. And uh, when you turn it off, has the bezel has like a little ring around it, it glows green. That gets charged from the light. Pretty neat. All right. Wasn't too bad, this Tucson. Only needed one alcohol swab. Normally I go through two. All right. Let's check it out. From the worst front flipper on Knife YouTube. Here we go. And I screw it up, of course. I tell you what, I've gotten spoiled by this other front flipper. Two front flippers recently. This one, gotta hit it in just the right spot. The knuckle, yeah, I can get it. You just gotta get it just the right spot. But this front flipper right here, this six leaf SO11, this thing really, really spoiled me. It's like ridiculous front flipping action. I mean, Anybody can front flip that thing. And then this Sync Up Bronte, which I put thumb studs on. They didn't come with that. It's really good front flipper also. So, But this one's closer to this one in the way it flips. But this one you get more leverage. There's very little to get up here. That's all the jimping you got. There's none on the front. So it's not a whole lot to catch there. But you do have a fuller here. And... If you do it just right, you can get it. You just gotta remember, I'm new to this knife, so I'm still learning its ins and outs. And I'm not, my left hand, my right hand is just terrible front or reverse flicking because of my arthritis, but I can actually reverse flick better with my left hand because of that. Thumb flick better with my right hand. You know, this knife would have been great. I think it'd have been better if they would have just put a hole through you know at least part of it they'd have put a hole all the way through the blade right here and then just they could have kept that part just milled out for the aesthetics of it but i think it'd have been a lot better and this knife reminds me a lot of another knife see if you can guess what that knife is by the way i'm holding it you got this ramp right here to put your thumb no jimping there though which is odd but you got this finger choil here and then with that spear point blade, it reminds me of my favorite knife. The EMP EGC Nimble. For some reason, it really reminds me of that. You see, can you see the similarities that I see? Blade shape. The, the handles are a little different, obviously, but the blade shape's very similar. If this had a hole in it, it'd be amazing. And it's not a very expensive knife. Well, I mean, to some people it may be expensive, but in the grand scheme of things this cost $90 shipped from White Mountain Knives with a 10% discount so this is something I don't know if I want to take a Dremel and do it 
I have to watch some videos. Actually, I've, I've got a drill press. I could probably clamp this thing down and go through with a drill press. And then use a Dremel to do the edges. Work it down to where it's right here where the where it's milled out. Wrap that edge and then polish off the inside maybe. That would also... See, I'd have to go all the way to there if I did it. Because I'd have to take off all the billboard in order it wouldn't look right. But I, I think having the hole all the way would be too much. But if I just came to like right there rounded that off right there past the S past well put it where you can see it if I were to just take the hole clear the hole all the way out to where the knives is at round that out just over the S that'd get rid of the maker's mark mods one mark charge mark but it'd also get rid of all the billboard and, and it put a hole in this thing this thing this thing would be so much better with hole everything's better with hole right I mean it's not just me that feels that way right everything's better with the hole see yeah no it's not the knife don't hold my poor deployment against this knife give me a few days with it to find the sweet spots and uh i gotta give them this though on it this isn't a review by the way but they did do the milling much better unlike that ts195 where they left burrs all around the where they milled out the blade they didn't do that on this one so it's nice and smooth out everything feels really good to the touch rounded off Everything's been sanded very well, so. All right, guys, that's the disassembly of the TS-341 Sidewinder by Tucson. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like, uh, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment if you have any questions, or if you want to tell me I'm, I'm an idiot, that's cool too. And uh, I'll take any comment I can get. So have a great night, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you on the next one.